Yet another very lovely evening out there to all of you, my dearest friends. We're going over today the book of Ruth. And this is, without a doubt, the best love story of the Old Testament. Let's get right into it. Verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, or Bethlehem as we would know it, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. So take note up here real quick. This is at the time of the judges, and there was a famine in the land. David Guzik commented the days of judges, a 400-year period of general anarchy and oppression. This is after the time of Moses and Joshua, whenever they had already taken most of the land. A time of anarchy and oppression when the Israelites were not ruled by kings, but by periodic deliverers known as judges, whom God raised up when the nation sought him again. And as mentioned in this first verse, there was a famine in the land. This makes it probable that the things here recorded came to pass in the days of Gideon. For that is the only time when we read of a famine in the days of the judges, Judges 6. Real quick comment by Charles Ellicott. Since Boaz was the son of Solomon and Rahab, whom there can be no reasonable grounds for supposing it to be any other than the Rahab of Jericho, it most certainly was, the events must be placed comparatively early in the period of the judges, and that's also a good fact to remember how Boaz's mother was a Gentile, Rahab. And really the motto of the time of the judges was how every man did that which was right in his own eyes. It was a pretty rough time to be in Israel. But now we see this family, they're relocating not to another place in Israel, but outside of Israel into a land where the god Chemosh is worshipped, the land of Moab. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, and the name of his two sons Malon and Kilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there, Ephrathites, which according to the book of Genesis, Ephrath was the old name of Bethlehem, Real quick note, we're told about these two sons. Their name is Malon and Kilion, which means sickness and wasting. It may be in reference to their premature death, the names being given by reason of their feeble health. And the scripture will every once in a while do this. They'll give the nickname, if you will, to a man because that's more they're more able to be identified with that. We still do this to this day with... Um, You'll see big, huge guys. They're known as monsters or beasts or something along those lines, you know. Verse 3. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malon and Kilion died, also both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread, meaning, finally, it began to rain. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. So many people remember the kindness of Ruth, but the story begins with a great kindness in which Naomi has exhibited, or at least is implied by Orpah's and Ruth's love for her. If there were more Naomi's, says Lawson, there might be more Orpahs and Ruths. So they're begging Naomi to let them come with her, and she replies, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands, meaning would you wait for them, you know, 18, 19, 20 years? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people, 
and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. Now this tells us something about how Orpah and Ruth were both idolaters. That's very important to note before you read the next verse. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. It's at this point that David Guzik noted how ten years of Naomi's compromise in Moab around this worship of Chemosh never made Ruth confess her allegiance to the God of Israel. Yet as soon as Naomi stood and said, I'm going back to the God of Israel, I'll put my fate in his hands, Ruth stood with her. Now there's a lesson for all of us in this. If you think you will persuade your friends or relatives to Jesus by your compromise, giving in to certain sins, thinking that maybe they're going to look at you as not so Christian-y and all of that, you are mistaken. Perhaps you are sincere, but you are mistaken. Only a bold stand for Jesus will really do it. Verse 18, so Ruth is pleading with Naomi, no matter what, I'm going to stay with you. When she saw, when Naomi saw that Ruth was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Now, like Abraham left those old false idols behind and then came to this land of Canaan, so now we see Ruth leaving her family and her old gods behind and coming into this promised land, both of whom would partake through the genealogy in bringing forth the Messiah of the world. Verse 19, So they two went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? Final comment for chapter 1 from Charles Ellicott. Naomi means my pleasantness. Mara means bitter. The latter word... Mara, or bitter, has no connection with Miriam or Mary, as some have supposed, which is from a different root. Final verse. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. 